Hey everybody, Gabby here with your battle of the day. We are back from a little bit of a tough loss yesterday to play Oliver from Mexico, I believe. Anyways, Oliver has a Dialga, a Xerneas, a Conkeldur, which I don't think I've seen in this metagame yet, a Salamence, a Whimsicott, and a Kangaskhan team. It's a very interesting team markup. He is kind of extremely weak to Xerneas once you get rid of his own Xerneas uh, counters, so I'm going to plan on doing that. Uh, I definitely want to lead Talonflame for this matchup, and to be 100% honest, I'm torn between leading my Groudon and leading my own Salamence. I'm going to go ahead and lead Groudon. I want to bring my Xerneas in the back to take advantage of his team's uh, somewhat apparent weakness to it, and then, um, you know, it's kind of a toss-up here between Salamence and Bunny, trying to figure out what Mega I want to bring. Um, I'm going to bring Salamence because Salamence is just the better Mega overall in this instance. Um, it can shut down his Salamence, it can shut down his Kangaskhan, it can do a lot of things. And the background music is weird because I went for track 21 and I accidentally hit track 22, which means I believe we're listening to the Deoxys encounter music today. Um, but that's even, you know, assuming that we can listen to it. Because I noticed on my last video that the in-game volume for um, music is really not loud. <laughs> We're using lots of scientific terms here today. Anyways, uh, we are going to see a Whimsicott Salamence lead for my opponent. Uh, Groudon is using its special primal powers to turn into special Groudon. Um, and that's how we're going to start off this match. Uh, right off the bat, I really want to get Tailwind up. Um, I think Whimsicott is going to try and set up to do something here, but honestly, I don't really know what it is. And... I don't really care. I want to get faster than that Salamence. So I'm going to go ahead and protect on Groudon and set up my own Tailwind. Uh, meanwhile, his Salamence is going to go ahead and Mega Evolve into Mega Salamence, uh, taking up half the field. And Whimsicott is going to go for Helping Hand. So we might try to see him either donk the Groudon or donk the bird here, to use very scientific terms. Um, however, he won't be able to stop Tailwind thanks to the fact that it is plus one due to Talonflame's Gale Wings ability. And Salamence doesn't go for uh, Double Edge, which is what I was concerned about. He goes for Hyper Voice. And Talonflame the Beast survives that with one HP. And now we're seeing a little bit of lag on the game. And I believe he just disconnected on me because his because Talonflame survived with one HP. So we take those. I don't I don't know what kind of damage calc that was, but we take those here. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and queue up another battle, I guess. Um, the one thing I hate about when your opponent disconnects is that your rating actually stays the same as it was going into that battle, which means there's a very good chance that we're going to see somebody in the 1400s for our next battle, which as you know is my favorite person to play. However, we aren't going to see a 1400 person. We're going to see Brian from Massachusetts. Hello, Brian. <laughs> so Brian is running something a little bit more standard and a little bit less Xerneas week. Um, we're going to see a Groudon Leopard. Uh, Eveltal, Kangaskhan, Cresselia, and Ferrothorn here. Um, I have a feeling that this team is kind of designed to either use Liopard to do speed control or to set up Trick Room. Um, so keeping that in mind, I'm going to bring Talonflame because it can shut down Trick Room, it can shut down Fake Out, it can shut down Priority, anything. And then I think for the other lead, I am going to go ahead and bring Xerneas. I definitely want to bring Groudon. And for that last slot, I probably should be bringing Bunny to this matchup, but I'm going to bring Salamence. I I think I just like Salamence better. I mean, I this could be something... Well, maybe not not this particular lead, because he does have Liopard. Um, you know, after you, Dark Void is a very strong strategy with Smeargle and Bunny, but I, I just... I don't... I don't play that. I bring it, but I don't really play it. Um, maybe I should, you know, fix that? I should have also fixed the encounter music. This is still, uh, Deoxys, but, uh... I mean, it's okay. Out of all the music tracks in the game, it's not really my favorite. Anyways, we're gonna see a Kangaskhan Liopard lead here. Um, very interesting. It also makes me a little bit nervous, honestly, um, because I could quick guard here, but... I, I don't really want to do that. I really want to try and get up Tailwind. Um, I worry that if I quick guard, he's just going to try and destroy my Xerneas. 
before I can get up Geomancy. So I think what I'll do is I'll actually try and Tailwind and I'll switch in Salamence so I can intimidate his Kangaskhan and um, so I won't die to the double edge, hopefully, because of that Intimidate. And so I can also have a shot of getting Tailwind up. And if I fail Tailwind to this turn, I can always go for it again next turn. And Salamence doesn't really care as much about speed things as Xerneas does in this matchup. So I think it'll just be a better play overall. Anyways, we're actually going to see Liopard go away. And in its place, we are going to see Groudon come out. So this would be a great opportunity to potentially intimidate the Precipice Blade's physical Groudon. Um, and even if it is Eruption, you know, thanks to... Actually, I don't even think I need Tailwind to outspeed Groudon. So really, um, not a disadvantageous play for me. I think that was more of a defensive switch to keep Liopard alive if I were to go ahead and attack with that Xerneas. Um, Salamence is going to come in and intimidate both Pokémon on the opposite side of the field. So that's cool. It's all good. Um, we're going to see King Scott Mega Evolve. <laughs> we're having a little bit of a slow start here trying to get this battle going. There's a lot of animations. <laughs> I kind of miss Showdown where everything was like boom, 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 boom. Even if I didn't get a chance to talk through my logic. Uh, no fake out from that Kangaskhan. Talonflame goes straight into the tailwind. Kangaskhan goes straight for the double edge into the Salamence slot. Will not pick up the KO, but gets pretty darn close there. Um, and will take some decent recoil from the attack. Actually, that's like no recoil. What am I saying? Um, so yeah, now that I have Tailwind up, I have, I have several options here. I can go for the Brave Bird into the Kangaskhan and hope that he doesn't try and Sucker Punch Salamence. I can um, quick guard and then double edge something. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna quick guard, mega evolve, and double edge the Kangaskhan. I am more worried about Kangaskhan right now, um, which actually turned out to be a great play because Groudon actually goes away, the sunlight goes away, and in its place, Liopard will come back out. Uh, so yeah, not. I have no idea what was up with that play, honestly. Um, Kind of a weird switch. It makes me think that it's a special Groudon because he didn't want it to possibly be, you know, uh, weakened by the double edge. A uh, quick guard will protect Salamence from the Sucker Punch. Double edge will go into the Kangaskhan slot and not get the KO, actually. It lives with just a sliver of health, which is unfortunate. Um, I am going to take this opportunity, though, to send in Xerneas again. I have a spread move that can easily pick up the KO on Kangaskhan, easily pick up, uh, probably bring down the Liopard to Sash, really, and I can still quick guard to protect every, uh, the field from any priority attacks. So, which I really have to do now that Liopard is out. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Chances are we are going to see Liopard switch again because he's already made that move once in the past. But this is really my best play because it'll stop potential prankster nonsense. It'll stop uh, Kangaskhan from attacking this turn no matter what happens. And it'll bring Liopard down to Sash even if it does try to foul play something. Which it looks like it will because nothing happened this turn. Um, so I could have been a little bit riskier there but I don't really think it was worth it. Uh, you know, Foul Play can only do so much damage here, especially to Talonflame? Yeah, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Um, and now we are going to see Groudon come back out onto the field. So, I need to Dazzling Gleam here on Xerneas at least. Though if I wanted to make the gamble that he's special, I could go for the Brave Bird to pick up the KO on Liopard and then go for um, Geomancy. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take a safer play in my opinion. Um, this is all making the assumption that he's going to assume I'm going to quick guard again. I've done it two turns in a row. I don't see why he would change and it looks like he did still maintain that assumption. Or Talonflame's faster than Liopard. I don't actually know. Um, anyways, Brave Bird does a little bit of damage to Groudon. However, I will take a lot of damage from... Um, from that attack. Liopard actually encores Talonflame into what was Quick Guard and what is now Brave Bird, which really isn't the worst move to be encored into, especially when Talonflame's probably gonna die this turn uh, to the eruption. Uh, it won't do a lot of damage to Xerneas thanks to the fact that Groudon's in yellow, 
but Talonflame is kind of not in a good position. And unfortunately, Tailwind is also going to peter out, which means it's going to be kind of a speed tie thing here, which always is not fun. Um, my Groudon will come in at full health, and he reveals his last Pokemon to be Cresselia. So a huge part of my win condition here um, is probably going to be killing that Cresselia this turn, because... If he brought Cresselia to this match, I would imagine that would mean that his Groudon is Trick Room. Um, so I'm going to Erupt and Moonblast into the Cresselia, assuming that it's going to try to set up Trick Room this turn, and his Groudon is going to protect so he can then Earth Power next turn, which is exactly what happens. So if I pick up the KO on Cresselia here, I lock myself into a win. If I don't pick up the KO on Cresselia, then it's going to be a little bit of maneuvering. And by a little bit of maneuvering, I mean it's going to be a lot of maneuvering, but I think I can still pull it off. Uh, Moonblast will connect with the Cresselia. It is not enough to pick up the KO. Unfortunately, Trick Room will be set up successfully. Um, so yeah, this is where we get into a little bit of a gamble here. I'm going to go ahead, actually, and try and KO his Groudon, assuming that he's going to assume that... I'm going to protect on Groudon and attack Xerneas. I'm also going to Geomancy on Xerneas because I think the special defense boost is really my only hope here of doing something. Uh, anyways, Cresselia goes for the Helping Hand. So maybe we're going to see Helping Hand Earth Power into the Xerneas slot. Nope, we're going to see it go into Groudon, which means Groudon is definitely going down this turn. Um, but, you know, my Xerneas will be able to su successfully get Geomancy up. So at this point, it's really more of a, you know, trying to stall out the rest of Trick Room game than anything else. Um, I'm gonna... It's it's interesting, because I'm gonna go ahead and protect, I think, next turn, just because I want to see what he's gonna pick. Um, but really, you know, if this were a tournament match, or if I was on stream and I wanted to get this over with, um, this protect isn't really that useful um, because I know Cresselia is going to keep helping handing and I know Groudon's probably going to stick with Earth Power because it does do single target damage and it's the higher base power now that Groudon's at such health, such low health. Um, but Groudon actually reveals Flamethrower so this is going to be more of a damage roll than I thought. I'm not really sure how much damage Flamethrower does to a plus two Xerneas at half health. I'm hoping that it won't get the KO because otherwise my best option here would have just been to keep mashing the protect button. Xerneas does die, so not really my game. I tried to stop the Trick Room setup, but I just couldn't do enough damage to that Cresselia in time. Um, and unfortunately I messed up. I probably could have Moonblast the Groudon maybe that one turn where he tried to pick up the kill on my ground on and protected so i would have it would have been a more obvious play but i was kind of expecting him to expect that so yeah i'm not really sure what else i could have done there anyways i guess you live and learn or something i don't know here's hoping that i eventually make it back up to 1600 anyways hey thanks for watching this video if you liked it press the subscribe button tell your friends and you know, I'll be back tomorrow with another battle of the day. Have a great Wednesday, everybody, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.